So it's time to move right along in the Halloween series with the next movie, which is 1982's Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Now this one is quite different from the rest of the series because this movie is in its own world. It does not feature Michael Myers at all and has nothing to do with the rest of the movies in the franchise. In fact, the only reference to the rest of the franchise is a TV commercial in this movie that advertises the 1978 Halloween movie. And then later we see that movie on another screen in the movie, showing that in this world, Halloween 1978 is just a movie as it is to us, so it's not even part of the same world. As always, be aware that if you have not seen this movie yet, that this video will contain spoilers. So as we stated at the end of the last review, when Michael Myers seemingly dies at the end of Halloween 2, that was intended to be his death and the end of his storyline. The intention going forward was to have different Halloween movies coming out in subsequent years, each movie having a different theme. However, this one underperformed, and so those plans were scrapped, and the series was eventually returned to Michael Myers. So let's start taking a look at the events of Halloween 3. In this movie, we have a toy store owner, Harry Grimbage. In the beginning, he's being pursued down a road. He goes into a junkyard. He's followed by two men. One of them attempts to kill him right away, but he's able to stop them when he um, gets the first man pinned between two cars, killing him. And he manages to get away and escapes to a local gas station where he collapses, but the attendant luckily takes him to the hospital. It's notable that he was carrying a jack-o'-lantern Halloween mask this whole time. We then are introduced to Daniel Chalice, the main character of the movie. He's going to see his ex-wife and two kids to bring them a present. He has two Halloween masks, but they already have Halloween masks that they say are better. They're silver shamrock masks. And then a commercial comes on for silver shamrock, giving us the notable jingle for the movie, counting down the days to Halloween. It's notable that there are three main masks for the Silver Shangrock company that they're advertising. One is a skeleton, one is a jack-o'-lantern, and one is a witch. The doctor get a call, gets a call and heads to the hospital where he goes and sees Harry Grimbage has been checked in. He is still clutching the jack-o'-lantern Halloween mask. They get him checked in and settled, and as he's recovering, the second man who had been pursuing him does come into the hospital, goes to his room, and kills him in kind of a gruesome fashion. He puts two fingers through his eyes and seemingly pulls his face outward, almost giving it a look of a mask, but I guess he's breaking his skull. He kills Harry Grimbridge, and then, after being seen by a nurse, flees the room. The doctor comes down and begins following him out of the hospital. But the man just continues to flee, he walks straight out, gets into his car, douses himself in gasoline, and then sets himself on fire. The next day, we're introduced to Ellie Grimbridge, the daughter of the man who was killed. She's come to identify her father's body, which she does, and also to try to find answers as to why he was killed. Unfortunately, at this time, the police don't have those answers yet. The whole situation doesn't seem to be sitting well with Dr. Chalice, and so he asks the um, autopsy examiner, Teddy, to take a closer look at the person who burned themselves in the car, and he asks her to specifically look at it and try to get him information. Ellie does seek out Dr. Chalice to try to find out if her father had said anything to him before he died. And eventually the doctor does reveal that he had said, they're coming for us, they'll kill us all, right before he died. And he had said this in a panic in the hospital when he saw the Silver Shamrock commercial come on the TV. Ellie asks for Dr. Charles's help and he agrees. They go back to her father's toy store and she says she's been doing some detective work. She reviewed his schedule and saw that he had been keeping most of his appointments. The one thing where things seemed to get confusing is there he had a scheduled appointment to go to the town of Santa Mira to the Silver Shamrock factory to pick up a new shipment of masks. So they decide that this is where they've got to go to check things out and they head to Santa Mira. When they arrive in town, they notice things are a little bit off right away. It seems like everybody in the town is watching them as they're driving through, and there's even security cameras posted around. And as they um, approach the factory, they decide that they need some time to think and plan, so they go to rent a room at the local hotel. The guy who owns the hotel is kind of a little odd as well, and seems a little obsessed with the town's owner. 
I guess he thinks he brought the town a degree of prosperity. And as they're being checked in and the man is showing them the room they'll be staying in, Dr. Chalice slips off to the office to look at the register, and he does see that Harry Grimbridge was indeed checked into the hotel just a few days prior. Dr. Chalice tells Ellie what he found out about her father, and they decide they need to go to the factory the next day to see what happened, but for the time being, they're going to lay low. The hotel starts to fill up with a few other guests, and at 6 p.m., it's notable that this town apparently has a 6 p.m. curfew. An announcement starts playing that all people need to enter their homes and stay there for the remainder of the night. Dr. Chalice and Ellie seem to begin a sort of romance for seemingly no other reason that there are, he's a man and she's a woman, and they're together. Um, Dr. Chalice does leave the room to get himself a drink of alcohol. On the way back, he bumps into a homeless man asking for a drink, and then he decides to ask him for information about the factory. The guy doesn't seem to like the factory. He says this guy came to town, started this factory, and doesn't employ any of the locals, only hires outsiders. He doesn't like it, and he says he has a plan to burn down the factory, making it their last Halloween. As we see the homeless man go back to his shack, he is immediately confronted by two henchmen from the factory. They've heard what he's said, and he starts to panic, but it's too late. They kill him immediately by pulling his head off his body. Next we have Marge, who is another shop owner there to pick up an order. She also has a mask that she said was damaged by her child, thrown against the wall, and the silver shamrock insignia coin fell off the back. So she goes into her room and puts it on the ground. She's watching TV and eventually she looks over and notices that on this silver shamrock emblem, on the back of it there's something weird. It looks like some sort of computer chip. She tries to take a look at it, poking it with a pin from her hair, and it f discharges, firing a beam of energy at her face, killing her. It disfigures her quite badly, and we later see a bug crawl out of her mouth. Then we see representatives from the Silver Shamrock Company come to recover her body. Dr. Chalice takes notice of this and tries to ask them what they're doing. The owner of the factory, Mr. Cochran, shows up and tells him that they have a state-of-the-art medical facility for emergencies in the factory, so they're going to take her there to treat her. The next day, Dr. Chalice tries to call Teddy to get some information. She notes that there's a problem with the results of the attempted autopsy, that what they got back is not showing any human body parts or tissue. It's only showing um, mechanical parts and car parts. She assumes that they mistakenly took part of the car instead of the body out of the burnt wreckage. So Ellie and Dr. Chalice go to the Silver Shamrock factory to try to figure out what happened with her father's order. They confirm that her father was able to pick up the order and the worker says that he took it out of town. As they're getting ready to leave, Buddy Kupfer, his wife Betty, and his son Little Buddy enter. They had met them the previous night at the hotel. He's another shop owner who sells silver shamrock masks, and he's here to have a meeting with Mr. Cochran. Mr. Cochran says that Buddy is his best salesman, has sold the most masks at his shop of anybody in the country, and he's invited him there to take a tour of the factory. They do also end up inviting... Dr. Chalice and Ellie on the tour because they are there under the disguise names of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Dr. Mr. Cochran does also try to make things better for them, saying that he's going to replace the missing order they're questioning from her father at no cost. So they go on the tour. He gives them a brief tour of the mask making process. When they come towards the end, little buddy says that he wants a mask and Mr. Cochran says that he can, of course, have one. When he goes to grab one, though, he says, no, you need one that's gone through final processing. And he hands him one that has the silver shamrock emblem on the back of it. As they're going out, Buddy asks him what is final processing, and he basically says that it's just quality inspection, and it's a little bit of a company secret. And we see a door in the background saying final processing and no entry authorized. 
it's at this point that Dr. Chalice starts to notice the various people standing around in suits watching everything and notes that they look remarkably like the man who had come into the hospital and killed Harry. So he goes and tells Ellie and they go to leave. As they're leaving, she notices her father's car in one of the similar shamrock garages and tries to go in, but she's blocked by these men, and so they give up on that and they leave. When they go back to the hotel, Ellie goes in, and Dr. Chalice goes back to the office to try to make a phone call. But he finds himself unable to make a call, as the phone is not letting any outgoing calls take place. So he goes back to the room, only to find that Ellie's gone, and that there are a line of Silver Shamrock employees outside in the parking lot walking towards him. He runs inside, closes the door, they come through breaking the door down, but he's gone out the back window, and he's beginning to flee, and he notices that there are Silver Shamrock vehicles making their way around town, assumingly looking for him. He finds a phone booth and tries to make a call, only to find that this phone, too, is also not allowing outgoing calls to be placed. We then see Ellie being taken into the Silver Shamrock factory. She had been captured and taken in one of the cars. Then Dr. Chalice does make his way to the factory and manages to break in. He begins looking around. He comes across a creepy old woman who's knitting, only to find that she's fake. He knocks her head off and sees that there's a mechanical gears inside making her do what she's doing. He then gets into a confrontation with one of the factory workers, and they fight, and eventually he gets the best of them and manages to punch into the abdomen of the the um, henchman and reveals that there is yellow goo inside and wiring, revealing that this is a robot, and that's what we're dealing with here. It's a factory full of robots robot henchmen that are doing the bidding of Mr. Cochran. That's why he doesn't hire anybody from the town. He's eventually captured by the other robots and Mr. Cochran. Mr. Cochran doesn't seem pleased that he broke his other device, the old lady who was knitting, and he captures him. They tell him it's almost morning and it's going to be a busy day for him on Halloween. They take him into the final processing room. They go downstairs. On the way down, Mr. Cochran reveals that making the robots wasn't that hard. They're easy and they're loyal and obedient to him, unlike most humans. Also notes that the outside, the human aspect of them was harder to make, but it's just another form of mask making. They come into a room, and it's full of computers and other devices, and a large stone. They reveal this is part of Stonehenge, and this is what's giving them the power to fulfill their plan. They are taking small pieces of it out, and they are putting it into the Silver Shamrock Emblem Coins, which is what is giving it the power. He then demonstrates what these will do. He has... the. Buddy and his family, and they're led to a room where they're told they're just to take notes on some commercials. So they decide to start the test, and they show the Silver Shamrock commercial come on the screen, telling the children to put on their masks and watch closely. Buddy's son, Little Buddy, puts on his mask and watches the TV, and as it does, a pumpkin comes on the screen and begins emitting a signal. This triggers the emblem and the mask to do what they're meant to do, and it kills little Buddy. He is being transformed slowly into bugs and snakes. His body is like decomposing into these, and these eventually take, kill his parents. His mother passes out, and she's overcome by the snakes and insects, and his father is also attacked by the various snakes and is killed. Mr. Cochran also reveals that Ellie was being held in a room nearby during this scene. Next, we go back to Teddy at the hospital. She's trying to call Dr. Chalice, but a henchman has been sent to take care of her to cover up the evidence, I would assume, and he kills her with a power drill to the head. We then go back to the Silver Shamrock factory, where Mr. Cochran has Dr. Chalice trapped in a room, and he tells him why he's doing this. He says that it's a funny joke on the children. He is a bit of a prankster, but there's a greater reason. It's part of an ancient ritual of sacrifice for Halloween to control the environment. So he believes this will give him the power to do that and cause change if he sacrifices as many children he can using the masks and this power that Stonehenge gives him. And so he leaves Dr. Chalice trapped in the room wearing a mask to be killed when the message comes on the TV in front of him. 
Dr. Chalice is able to break the TV and get the mask off, and he has a piece of glass, so he's able to cut his restraints. He then makes a heck of a throw, since he's still partially restrained, and throws the mask he was wearing over the security camera, giving him time to find a way out. He does eventually find a way out, and then get back into another part of the factory. He tries to call his wife to warn her that his children can't watch the show, and she needs to get rid of the masks, but... She's not very receptive, as he keeps canceling plans on her throughout this entire movie. So he goes and eventually does find Ellie and frees her and goes to set his plan in motion. He finds a box of the Silver Shamrock emblems, and then he sneaks over and somehow knows the exact combination of buttons to hit to begin the signal. He then takes this box of Silver Shamrock emblems up into the rafters while being pursued by a number of the robot henchmen, and he begins to sprinkle these emblems down from the rafters. Now this is causing an interesting effect. All the robots nearby are being killed from the release of energy, and it starts to a bigger reaction. It starts Stonehenge reacting to it, and Mr. Cochran is killed in this scene. He is sacrificed by his own plan, and Ellie and Dr. Chalice manage to make a, an escape. They get in the car and start heading out of town, and Dr. Chalice tells her they need to figure out a way to stop the broadcast, and then Oh no, Ellie is indeed a robot herself. She's been replaced by a robot, and she attempts to try to kill him. It takes multiple attempts to stop her. He manages to... They crash the car. She gets out. She has lost an arm. She tries to attack him. He knocks her head off with a tire iron. Her body still comes back and tries to attack him again, and he is also attacked by her arm that was still inside the car. Ellie um, was at some point replaced by the robot. It's interesting to note, though, that... When he was sprinkling the emblems out that killed most of the henchmen in the factory, it also killed ones that were coming up the stairs, but none of it seemed to have any effect on Ellie, who was herself a robot at this point. So he eventually does get away and makes it to the same gas station that Harry Grimbridge made it to in the beginning, and the same attendants there who had helped him to the hospital, and he asks for the phone, and he begins to call the TV station, and he tells them they need to stop the broadcast at any means. Some trick-or-treaters wearing silver shamrock masks arrive and go to the TV, and the 9 o'clock broadcast that's going to cause this reaction begins. And on the first channel, they say they're stopping due to technical difficulties, they change the channel, again it says they're changing due to technical difficulties, and they turn it to the third station, and this one is not stopping, it's going on, and Dr. Chalice is yelling into the phone that you need to stop this, stop it right now, and the movie ends with him yelling to stop it as the commercial is playing onward. So we're left not knowing what goes on here, it seems that they didn't stop it, so we're not sure what happens here, did they manage to stop the broadcast, or did it go forward? killing unknown numbers of children and other people throughout the country. But that is the end of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So, the interesting thing about Halloween 3 is it is its own movie, separate from the rest of the franchise, as we've noted before. And as a standalone horror movie, it's not that bad. It's not that good either. It's not that special. There's not a lot super notable. If it weren't for the fact that it was labeled as part of the Halloween series, this would probably just be a forgettable horror movie of the 80s. There were a lot of low-grade horror movies in the 80s. There were also a lot of fantastic horror movies in the 80s. This one was just average and probably would have gone down as such. The only thing really working against this movie is that they tried to label it as part of the Halloween franchise. So the death toll in this movie is kind of tricky to calculate because several of those killed were the robot henchmen from the Silver Shamrock factory. There are nine confirmed human kills in this movie, and those would be starting with Harry Grimbridge killed by a henchman in the factory, the homeless man that spoke to Dr. Chalice had his head pulled off by the henchman, Marge was electrocuted by the Silver Shamrock emblem. And then the entire family of Buddy, Betty, and Little Buddy were killed in the room by the commercial and the mask and it turning into insects and snakes. The um, Teddy was killed by a power drill by the robot henchman. Mr. Cochran was killed by the 
sacrifice to the Stonehenge piece that they had in the room. Ellie, we assume, was killed and replaced with a um, robot henchman. We know that she was replaced by a robot henchman, and so we assume she was killed in that process. So those are the nine confirmed human deaths we have in this movie. And then there are several robot henchmen killed throughout the movie. And we don't know about the ending of the movie. If the commercial went on and played and did what it was supposed to do, we can assume that up to hundreds, thousands, or even millions of children, parents, and other people around the country were all killed the moment that commercial went on the air. So it's a hard death toll to calculate. I would, the main number I would focus on is nine confirmed human deaths. So looking at reception of the movie, it was not really well received. On Rotten Tomatoes, it only received a 47% fresh rating, giving it a rotten score. And it received an even lower audience score of only 28% fresh. Over on IMDb, the movie gets a 5.1 out of 10, higher than I would expect. For my personal score, I actually break it into two categories. As a standalone movie, as I said, this isn't terrible. It's just not notable or anything really special. As a standalone movie, I would score this movie at a 4 out of 10. However, as part of the Halloween franchise, which it almost killed, I would score it a 1 out of 10. Oddly enough, this isn't the lowest reviewed Halloween movie out there, although to me it probably should be. It just doesn't belong in the Halloween universe in general. So that is my review of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Moving on, it's time to get back to where Halloween belongs, and that's in Michael Myers land. Luckily, after this movie was a disaster for them, they realized their mistake, they realized that they had killed the Golden Goose, and they realized they needed to get back to what made the first two movies successful, and that was Michael Myers. So look for the next video coming soon, which will be for Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Please comment on this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and keep an eye out for that next video coming soon.